It's five o'clock. We're gonna start. We're gonna start. It's five o'clock uh, and it's uh, the 14th of August. Welcome to Watch Me Work. I'm SLP. We are here and we've been doing the show for like 14 or 15 years now where we get together mostly on Mondays where we uh, work together for 20 minutes and then we invite you to talk about your work and your creative process. Um, while we don't have time to actually share our work, like read it aloud or anything like that for feedback, we do have plenty of time to talk about the process and how you're doing, things like that. So um, we want to give a big shout out and a thank you to the Public Theater and HowlRound for helping us make this community possible, especially on Zoom, where we have been for the last couple of years since uh, the pandemic started. Uh, before that, of course, we were in person in the lobby of the Public Theater. Uh, but so if you, we're going to work together for 20 minutes, and then you're going to get in touch with me, ask me questions about your process. And should you want to get in touch, Cody is going to tell us how. Go, Cody. Thanks Hello, for being Hello, friends. Great to meet you all. Um, I'm filling in for some of my Public Theater counterparts. And uh, so today, if you are in Zoom, you can ask a question after the 20 minutes um, by clicking the raise your hand button, which should be in the reactions tab, likely at the bottom of your screen, or if you tap your screen, if you're on an iPad or something like that. Um, if you have trouble finding it, just message me on the chat um, and I should be, I'll do my best to help you out. Um, if you're watching on the stream on HowlRound, please feel free to send us your questions via the Public Theater Twitter or Instagram account um, or via the Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP uh, with the hashtag HowlRound spelled H-O-W-L R-O-U-N-D, and we will make sure to funnel it back here so that we can get those questions up. Fantastic. Thank you, Cody. Very well done. Here we go with our timer.
Okay. Okay, okay. That was 20 minutes. Amazing. And so quickly. Um, okay, so we're back and we're going to take your questions. Let's see if Cody is Cody. Hello, I'm here. Hi there. Those 20 minutes go fast, girl. Uh, so uh great. So if we um if you have some questions, uh Cody can unmute you and uh, you can ask me. All right, um, MC, I saw you physically raise your hand. Okay, cool. I can, you should be able to unmute now. There you go. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. I'm in my favorite place. Oh, where? Uh, Provincetown, Massachusetts. Oh. Yeah. How and so beautiful. I, uh, I know. I try to come every year to hang out at the um, Fine Arts Work Center. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a bunch of us meet, and this is our, uh, our week here so Gorgeous. I have I know I want to save this as my my screenshot background for the rest of the yeah. year so yeah, maybe. definitely definitely yeah. yeah so when you were writing father comes home from the war wars yeah. mm -hmm. um and the the idea of the odyssey the as your was how how did you let that inspire and inform your work? Yeah. Did you yeah. ever think about the ending? Are you are you um are you working on a, a piece where you're using a uh being inspired by other pieces? Yeah, I, I well I've been reading about different artists who then use that. Well, I was reading um this book Home Fire by um I can't pronounce her name, but she just wrote a a novel a couple of years ago um she's a Pakistani Londoner mm -hmm. and she was inspired by Antigone uh-huh uh-huh and um you know sometimes we 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 think we don't have to I I try to think remind myself I don't have to reinvent the wheel right 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 right, right. and so you know I think about what might be sort of an inspiration or guide for me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And same with Ann Patchett, her new book out is sort of combination of our town and um the cherry orchard. Yeah, uh -huh. I think. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I'm just wondering. She, you know, she she says that or or I'm just curious. Well, just Ann Patchett, I think she she's well she has said in interviews, yes. But it's really more, uh, even though it's set in a cherry farm in Michigan, it's what? really more like our town uh -huh, uh -huh. or a character who plays Emily over and over again. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But there happen to be three sisters and there it happens to have a cherry orchard. So people automatically. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, that's what I sort of wanted to hear what you were working on MC in relation to your question, because uh, people have said Father Comes Home the Wars is based on the Odyssey, and right. it's based on like five or six, I mean, lots and lots of different things. So that's yeah. the first, that's the first answer. Um, with with me, I don't know with these other writers, uh, Ann Patchett and your other writer. Um, I don't know their process, but for me, it was the Odyssey, the Mahabharata, lots and lots of things. Um, people make the mistake because what people say is it's based on the Odyssey. So then they start to try to connect the dots. Yes. And then they get confused because after, oh, one person's name is Hero or Homer and there's a dog in it. Then they get confused because it's not, I mean, if you, we know the Odyssey, Father Comes Home the Words, it, it, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's very little like that. So, so, so yeah. So there's a little bit, there's, a name from here and a name from there, and someone coming home from the war is based more on the fact that my dad was in the army and came home from the war a lot. That's what it's based on, not the Odyssey. So, so um, yeah. Anyway, but that's just to clarify that. 
Yeah, so outsiders use it as a way to simplify and pitch things because it's easier to say it's like this. Or, yeah, yeah, like, or a, 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 a critic or a scholar or something uh, fond of putting things in boxes neatly, organizing things might say, it's like that. And then everybody goes, oh, of course. And then that, so there's a, 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 a bit of misunderstanding that's generated, which I think doesn't serve the work ultimately, or people who are coming to the work to understand it. I mean, you look at, again, just look at Father Comes Home for the World. I mean, this thing, this part two, what does that have to do with the Odyssey? I don't yeah. know. You know, part one, what does that have to do with the Odyssey? I don't know. He comes home. <laughs> There's a song. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, so anyway, but to your point, like, are you thinking of maybe basing one of your works on a classic text? Do you have something in mind or? Well, I've been mulling some things over, but I really was trying to get trying to ask you a question and it was a very smooth pivot back to me. And now I find I can't answer that. It's okay. It's okay. You don't have to answer it. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll answer your question without talking about yeah. the, Father, the Wars and the Odyssey because that right. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, but um, if you want, I would say if, if you if you have a classic work that you'd like to base uh, like a, like a, 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 oh, gee, I forgot his name. Uh, Rent, the, the fellow who wrote Rent, whose name I'm spacing right now. Anyway, he, he based his, his uh, Rent on La Boheme. He, he said that. Okay, so um, great. So if you, I would say get really familiar with the work that you're interested in. Really, really familiar with it. And read it or, or, or you know, listen to the music or how, whatever. It's a, if it's a text, read it so many times that it kind of becomes almost like a background mm -hmm. noise, you know? Um, and then go about your writing from that point of view so that it's informing some of your moves, but it's not like, uh, you know... You, this character is going to be this character in my book. And this character is going to be this character in my book. I mean, there, that you can do it that way too. Um, but that's not, you know. Yeah, I don't want to be a slavish imitation because it would yeah. Yeah. definitely fall short. And, yeah. you know, I got my own thing to do. Exactly. And I'm, in, I'm more interested in riffs, what I call riffs. Like In the Blood and Fucking A, my two plays are, are mm -hmm. riffs of a scarlet letter. They're not... The, the stories are so different from the Scarlet Letter, but the, some characters have the same names. There's an A, you know. Yeah. Um, so just just sort of read the text a lot. Say if you're gonna do a, 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 a you're gonna base something on Hamlet. Let's just say we've all mm -hmm. heard of Hamlet, and read it a lot, a lot, a lot, and allow it to inform your work. Um, and and you know, make good use of the, the wheel, as you said, the wheel that's already been made. Right. You know? Don't right. throw out the wheel. Don't, oh, great. Now I'm just going to say, I'm going to say it's based on Hamlet or King Lear because that will get me some buzz and then I'm just going to toss it out and do my own thing. Well, you might as well do your own thing then. Yeah. I like the idea I'll, of the riffing. That's the perfect yeah. way for me to yeah. think of it. So like uh, Charlie Parker, the, you know, musician. Yeah. Um. He had a tune called Now's the Time, right? Now's the, yeah, Now's the Time. I think it's called Now's the So it went, now, right. What does it sound like? He was riffing on you're in the army now. Cool. Or Coltrane yeah. has his version of my favorite thing. My favorite things, yes. To, to the original, but still it, he goes off in interesting places. Um, so there's that tradition, you know, mm -hmm. but they, they really had that other song in their head and then they took it somewhere else, right? So that's kind of what we, I mean, what you might want to do, or you can do an adaptation of a classic, which is also appropriate, you know? Yeah. I just like the idea of riffing. That's mm -hmm. the way I'm going to think mm -hmm. about things. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, MC. Great question. Love that where you are right now. Good for you. Beautiful. Um, our next up is uh, AL. 
So you should be able to unmute now. There you go. Hi, um, I, I, uh, Jonathan, wow. Jonathan Larson. That's right. Jonathan Larson, bless his heart. Yes, sorry. Yeah. I name. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is a question. There's probably a question in there that you're going to find. But um, I had a, a very good friend die uh, last week. Oh. And what happened? Yeah, I mean, just sucked to the nth degree. Um, but I've never had a grief reaction like I had before um, to somebody leaving my, you know, not only their life, but my life. And I couldn't stop writing. And, you know, from previous times, I've been having a hard time just kind of getting started and coming up with all these excuses why I couldn't do it. I couldn't shut it off. It was like a damn faucet. Wow. And I haven't read a lot about the grief response to creativity, but it just blew me away that I had that kind of response. So not only did I write about him nonstop, mm -hmm. but I also started working on all the stuff that I hadn't been working on. Mm -hmm. And I can't really understand and maybe we're not meant to understand why stuff like that happens because I got to tell you you know now that I've gotten used to him not kind of being around the faucets dried up mm -hmm. and it's horrible to think about you know like well maybe every time a friend dies I'll be incredibly creative <laughs> and it's like it's like that comedy that uh, conversation you had about somebody being on weed and that you know it's fine once in a while but you kind of don't want to get used to using weed to Right, right, right. This was obviously this is something totally different, but it was that kind of reaction that my mind just exploded. And I just thought, I didn't know if you've read anything that would be kind of interesting for me. But I I, uh, I haven't read it. I'm 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 really sorry for your loss, Al. I mean that's you. I'm I'm so I'm so sorry. Sounds like it they were a dear friend and and they meant a lot to you, and I'm sorry that they're gone. Thank you. Um I I, here's a, I'm going to ask you a, maybe a, I'm going to ask you a different question. I don't have any. I haven't read any literature about the grief response to creativity. Um, what I am curious about is, um, did you enjoy writing like that? Yeah, and that's I think what freaked me out a little bit oh. was that it was just what? you know I couldn't I couldn't sleep. I wasn't eating, but damn, I could write. Right. And I was like, holy shit, you know. Now what? <laughs> so. Right. Well, would you like to be writing and be able to sleep and be able to eat regularly? Would I think like I think that would probably be a really good idea. <laughs> right. So maybe maybe one could say, I'm just again, I'm just guessing. Again, I haven't read any literature on this and I'm not a grief creativity specialist. Um, but maybe uh something uh, in your friend's passing. Uh, reminded you of how time is limited. I was wondering if that was part of it, you know, the whole mortality thing. And I was wondering if that's what I was hooking into. And I don't think so. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's part of it. There was well, something I mean, else at work. Not in a bad way, Al. Not in a bad way, like, whoa, time is limited. But to realize that I'm just going to be honest with you, like everybody, you're not going to be here forever, you know, and if you don't get your work done, your time will be over and you won't have gotten your work done. And that's a choice that you can make. We all have to make that choice. You know, it's like either I'm going to spend my time frittering away, like doom scrolling on my phone. No, I don't think anyone on their deathbed ever has said, gosh, I wish I had doom scrolled more. Scroll more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or I wish I'd watched more episodes of Good Morning America or whatever shit that's on the television that we think we have to catch up on, you know? Um, but I think a lot of people do wish that they had done the thing that they always wanted to do. And he here's your chance. I'm just talk telling you, here's your chance. I mean, for all of us, we're all included in this. Here's your chance. It's right now. It's happening right now. We have a chance to do the thing that we've always wanted to do. And so, and we have a choice. We have a chance and we have a choice. And we can make that choice. We have a chance to do it. And we have a choice to decide to do it or decide not to do it. And that, that's what it is. So you made the choice in, the, in the, having, you know, experiencing the grief and hearing of your dear friend's passing 
to, to charge forward. <laughs> That's a good choice. And you can, you know, use them as your ally to help you get to the finish line of whatever you want to work on. You know, um, and it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a, it's a, I mean, the passing is a sad thing, but, but the way it motivates you is a good thing. There's a story about Tom Waits that maybe <laughs> everybody knows about him driving and all of a sudden getting a great idea for a song. And he's yelling, can't you see I'm driving here? And that's what this whole week has been. Um, just this bizarre popping thing. So I don't know if it was ever a conscious choice what you're talking about, because of course it makes sense. But there was this just hyperdrive. And maybe it just ties into what you were saying. I don't know. But um, it was one of the oddest things that's ever happened to me. And, um, but I am taking wow. what you're saying wow. into, uh, into effect. No, I, hear. I, mean, I, into, just, I just encourage you to do your work. I mean, okay, I haven't heard that story about Tom Waits. Um, did, <laughs> he, did, he, did he write the song eventually or no? I don't know. It's, you know, it's one of those apocryphal things. If I find it, I'm going to, I'm going to send it to you. But what but, we do know about Tom Waits is he's written a lot of fucking great songs. He's written so a lot of fucking great songs. That one while he was driving. Yeah. You know, he just needed to get to wherever he was going, you know, but I can bet you that he made time to write the songs that he's written because he's wrote, he's written so many great songs. Yeah. So he's made that he had the chance and he's made the choice and he's still making the choice. He's still writing great stuff, you know? So, yeah. so, uh, sometimes you got to tell the muse, hold off. I got to make this turn here. <laughs> I got to get the kid to school or whatever it is you're doing, you know? But, um, you know, most of the time it's just like, you're just anesthetized. You're just like, I'm not even paying attention to the muse because I'm busy doing bullshit. <laughs> the real deal. Anyway. Thanks, thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank, great, great. Thank you for sharing that today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone else have our next question? Lynn, beautiful. You should be able to unmute. Hey, Lynn. Uh oh, you're muted. Um, did you get a little pop up that said unmute? There, there you, you go. go. Okay. Um, uh, Al, is that well, A A L? I don't know whether that's your name or if your name is Al. I'll call you Al. <laughs> um, a friend of mine, a dear friend, uh, Pam Blair, who who had uh, uh, recently passed away, and and I was thinking about that too because um, what we leave. Uh, I remember when my mom died. Uh, about a year after she died, I was looking through some stuff that was in a box, and it was a notebook that she had written. She had just scrawled her thoughts down. And it was such a gift to me because I knew her more from her thoughts than the woman who brought me up and had her, there's a Jewish word called mishigas. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically, it sounds like what it is. It's not a monopoeic word. She had her mishikas. And um, it was such a gift to see that whatever she wrote, which was intimately what she was thinking, you know, uh, was her, how she thought, what she cared about. Mm -hmm. It was such a gift. And Though many people here might have uh, a great goal to write a the great novel or a great play or something, that somebody can leave their thoughts on paper, it can leave their stories on paper, uh, is a kind of a concretizes that they were here. At least that what it was for me. You know, it was such a gift that. 
oh, that's what she was thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, uh, I don't know if there's a question in there. My question was really about the Mahabharata, uh, but uh, Al kind of uh, brought me to that. The uh, what about the Mahabharata? Well, well, the Mahabharata is is this, you know, this great, wonderful, huge, uh -huh. you know, the Karavas and the Pandavas, and well, you know. So mm -hmm. but when when I saw and read Father Comes Home from the War, I never connected them. And what was the connection? Was it just the vastness or, or the the good and the evil or um Bug, the time, 12 noon and the Bhagavad Gita? Yes. The Song of God is kind of like part two. Sure. Okay. That's I saw it anyway. That's how, that's what inspired me. You know, that's, that's yes. what, the dog in it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, See, it's simple. You. It's not, you, know, you see what I mean? It's it's not, it, it ain't that like, it's not like, um, it's not that scholarly, I would say. You know, I mean, I, I admire critics and, and uh, scholars. They're very scholarly and all that. And yes. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> well, you know. do you have to be well read to be a good writer? That's really my question. What is well read? Oh, read a thousand books i'm dyslexic so i, right. I slowly and you know i think i mentioned you can I, also do books uh, but, uh, audible, audible you know yeah 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 right that's a great that's a great way to digest books um do you have to be well read to to um i think um i don't know i think you have to write a lot thank you okay thank yeah. you yeah yeah just love you thank you I think you because I think we get better. The more we do it, we get better because we're learning how to do it. You know, we're actually learning how to do it. Some people we might we might make the mistake sometime to call it inspiration, but it might just be like learning how to do the shit. Well, like, it's also kind of I know when I because of you, you know, I have a writing practice and there is a flow. All of a sudden, you get into the man, the flow. You know. Uh, uh, uh the, the the zone the flow and it just flows and it's as if you're not writing i mean that's my mm -hmm. limited experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know where something other takes over than i guess i call it my ego you know and it just flows mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. you know i read it two days later and i thought who the fuck wrote that you know what i mean uh-huh <laughs> uh-huh uh -huh. uh -huh. But um, yeah, like that. Sorry, I said the F word. I'm sorry. Oh, please. <laughs> but yeah, that's good. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you for that comment. Those comments. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. We have about 15 minutes left if there is another question. Yes, in answer to the question in the chat, um, we do this most Mondays, um, so there is a uh, link that goes out. There's also information about it on the Public Theater's website. Um, sometimes for various all days or conflicts, they they we skip Mondays, but that's always posted about, uh, so you can track when we're here. Yeah, thanks for that info, Cody. Yeah, we're we're here. Um, yeah, sometimes we have we're otherwise engaged or sometimes it's a it's a national holiday or something um but yeah we're here
think we have a question in the chat um, for you, SLP, to know more about the dog. I assume they mean in Father Comes Home. Uh, but I'm not sure, Sasha, would you <laughs> like to unmute and chat? I can. Um, there you go. It just sounded like maybe SLP, you were saying that a dog was kind of an inspiration for you. Uh, yeah. Um, the biggest inspiration for Father Comes Home from the Wars was the fact that my dad was a, an army officer and went to war many times and we sat around waiting for him to come home and he came home and then he went to war again and he came home. That was the biggest inspiration. All the other things from the Mahabharata to the Odyssey to, you know, uh, a bucket of Kentucky fried chicken to uh, whatever, those are, those were just small little bits of things that helped. But the biggest thing was the story of my family. Because as we know, there are no enslaved people. I mean, in the Odyssey, I mean, as main characters, there's no core. I mean, it, 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 if we try to trace and, you know, do a paint by numbers thing, it doesn't hold up and it only creates confusion. I think a critic saw that they heard the word Homer and they saw, and the dog and they, of course, that's what it is. And that while it was very uh, praiseworthy, you know, they gave the show a lot of praise. They kind of narrow, they limited the understanding. People coming after saying, oh, so how does, where does Smith fit in? And he's a black man passing for white. How, where is that in the Odyssey? And I'm like, it's not, <laughs> but it's in my family, in my personal family, so. Does that help? I mean, there's, there's a, but there's a dog in the Odyssey and there's a dog in the Mahabharata. And we had a dog named Penny, funnily enough. So I just say, you know, read a lot, get your inspiration from everywhere. The world is singing, you know, the world is singing to you. Get your inspiration from books and music and, and postcards and, and things you hear people say in the park that sounds weird and and write, write, write every day, do your work um, so that you can pour your life into your work, whatever your work is. MC, do you have a friend who's there? Who is that? Oh, could you unmute MC? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Hi. why don't you introduce yourself? My, my name is Sarit. He's a fellow, he's a fellow writer and poet who's really? here. Hi. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Good. Thanks for hanging out with us. Wow, this is great. He wrote some really great poems. What else do you do? I do. Oh, and his name means what? Sarit? Son of the river. Tell everybody. Son of the river. Son of the river. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, what a beautiful! But you can also call him Cerrito Burrito. Ha! <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, what are you working on this week, Cerrito? Uh, what am I working on this week? Well, you finished a poem this morning, but are you going to continue to work on that? Uh, I, I'm going to write a different one. Okay. Yeah, he's really prolific. Uh Oh, See? My oh we're so inspired and by performance it. art performance oh, art what do you mean performance? you know when the the friar and moose oh, and yeah. everybody oh, yeah. you know get their passports and yeah, and yeah. so yeah <laughs> He's one of the great inspirations. So we get to see each other a couple times a year and it's like our writing group is together. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Wow. Well, congratulations on finishing your poem today. Good luck on your next draft. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Great to meet you, friend. Lynn. You should be able to unmute. There you go. I, I know this is, could we hear Sarit's poem from today? No. Okay. We, don't have, we don't have the bandwidth to 
have you all read your work and and that that's that's not what we're doing here we talk about process you yes. know and you've been coming since we were in the lobby of the public theater i so very generous that's very, <laughs> that's very that's very generous um but uh we we just keep our focus to okay. process yeah. no i, I yeah. absolutely i'm sorry yeah. no 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 it's all good your enthusiasm is welcome and adored always Same thing. Do we have any other questions? We have the other friend. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. If no one has any more questions, we can happily come back next week. We'll be here. That's Amazing. Right. Okay. Lovely. All righty. Well, it's great to see you everybody this week. Have a great week. Best of luck with your work. We'll see you next time. Thank you.